Hey guys, Doug here from Motion. Today I'm here with a Tech Tip Tuesday, and today we're talking about exhaust trim rings. They've become very popular for obvious reasons. Getting the exhaust out of the side of your car rather than underneath is A, easier to run piping with turbo stuff, B, safer because uh, there's always a certain amount of moisture, condensation, uh, oil, everything that comes out of the uh, exhaust of a boosted car especially, but every car really. And the more we get that out of the side of the car where it has no chance of hitting the tires, the safer the vehicle is going to be. That's why you see the trend of this becoming very popular. Also, it makes uh, typically header design much easier. Um, it makes pulling transmissions easier. It makes, uh, it just gives you a lot of new abilities in uh, building a car. And it just seems to make sense. That's why you see it on a lot of cars. So today I'll show you how I uh, install trim rings, how we get the exhaust to come out right in the middle of it, and I'll give you some pointers and tips along the way of why we do things the way we do. I really like these uh, low profile trim rings that we have. Uh, the main reason is they're just not so gaudy. I want them to cover the cut edge, but I don't want them to be so ridiculous that they take your focus off the rest of the car. I feel like less is more. So that side's done already. Um, this side, we have the downpipe started. This is the beginning of the downpipe. It's just gonna wrap around the frame rail here and uh, go out the bumper. And uh, our goal is obviously to get it to go out the same spot. One of the hardest things is figuring out where it's gonna land because even the slightest bit of, you know, curvature on the actual downpipe is gonna you know, when it goes two or three feet that way, it's gonna change how it lays out. So I'll show you how I draw it, how I stencil it, and then um, how I just do it all together without hurting the paint on the backside, uh, but landing a hole in the right spot so you don't have to redo the downpipe down here. So we got our downpipe back on. One thing that you will note is if you're building your own downpipe, make sure that clamp up here is tight because just because it's on, the the downpipe can actually sag a bunch and move a lot. I've done that where I've built it around a clamp that wasn't tight. And then uh, when you actually go to tighten it, the uh, whole downpipe moves. I mean, you got a lot of leverage and dis distance here. So even the slightest bit, like I said earlier, can change it. So make sure, you know, your V-band is lined up. You can actually have a little bit of slop in there. And then also make sure the clamp is tight so that this doesn't rock back and forth. So as you can see, we have a pipe coming towards the bumper so i mean that part is already done and as you can see it gets a little tight in here with the alternator the fans will actually move up a little bit i don't have them secured right now uh, but we have the space we need so now what we need to do is figure out exactly where this is going to land because we only have about quarter inch gap on each side um, all around the pipe and uh, that's not a lot to miss by and we obviously want it to be as centered as possible in that hole so the next step is pretty crucial. So again, this next tip uh, is just my personal preference. I like things to be very clean and simple. I don't like uh, things on the car to distract from the car. Uh, I'm the type of guy that likes a painted wing on the car so it doesn't look like it has a wing. I like you know, very subtle details like this and I like factory appearance. So your preferences may change from mine, but how we do trim rings at Motion, um, we get calls about this a lot because this, this is, for instance, a three and a half inch pipe. Well, the problem with a three and a half inch pipe is if you order a three and a half inch trim ring, there's no clearance. So our three and a half inch exhaust trim ring is actually pretty close to four inch ID inside of this hole. And the reason for that is uh, you want a proper air gap in there. Um, number one, it's gonna protect the paint on the car. And uh, number two, especially if you have a, a metal fender. If this gets too close, it's just gonna rattle on the actual fender and on this. And uh, the more it touches, these downpipes get really hot, so they're gonna melt stuff, whether it's a nitrous car, or, uh, even some NA cars, boost cars definitely will melt this. So you want a nice air gap in there, and uh, that gives you a little bit of room for air too when you're actually cutting the hole in there. So if you order a trim ring from us and it comes in and has and is uh, larger, it's by design. That's what. That's how it's supposed to be, and that's how you want to do it. You know, if this is your first build, you by no means want this to be touching like that. It's near impossible to land it, and number two, it's gonna melt the paint right off your fender. So the next piece to get that exhaust landed where we want it, um, and then we'll be able to compare it to the old uh, hole, 
As you can see, I missed the cut a little bit on this side, but it's gonna be covered up by the trim ring, so no big deal. I was originally gonna do an oblong um, hole and use one of our oblong on trim rings, but at the last second, we changed our mind. Luckily, I didn't cut too far. But anyways, back to this side. So we want them to match because, well, for obvious reasons, you want them to match. So what we're gonna do, uh, because to actually have a pipe the right length, it's near impossible to get the pipe to land, you know, up there, and then also be able to trace around it. So we have this little, made this little telescoping piece. So it's just a piece of three and a half inch pipe so I can hold this back to the other pipe that's already there and then uh, telescope that out so it touches a bumper and then I can trace around it. So just a cheap trick. It works really well. Um, definitely not a precision piece of equipment, but it works and it'll give you uh, everything you need to get the job done. Basically what we're trying to do here is see where it's gonna land. So once you get it up here, you can actually you know, telescope that out. And then once you telescope it against that bumper, you'll just take a Sharpie, but just draw around the outside of that paper really carefully. So I'll go ahead and do that now and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. So the next step I'm going to use a three and a half inch hole saw. If you don't know a whole lot about hole saws, especially the big ones, they wobble a lot. So a three and a half will be just over three and a half, um, depending on how shitty your hole saw is. Uh, it might turn into four, but uh, the, on the other side where I cut it, it was right at three and a half. So what I do, you know, if you have a three inch hole, you could probably use this and it would give you the gap. Uh, I prefer to go ahead and use this. It'll wobble a little bit and then I'll uh, use a little barrel sander or a saw to cut the rest of it out just so I can sneak up on that um, trim ring on the inside because like I said, there's a very small amount and that's how I prefer it. So to do it cleanly, it's just nice to sneak up on it and then you can make it, you can make fine adjustments to get it exactly where you want it. Plus, if you make it smaller and miss, you'll be able to see uh, when you miss where you hit. And then if it's smaller, you can kind of um, massage it to make it the, the right size and all of that. Uh, so it gives you a little bit of room for error. You can see that circle right there. So because of, like I said, the slope of that, I was only able to get some of it. I'll line this up to make sure it's right. And what I'm all I'm gonna do at this point is, now that I got everything lined up, I'm gonna just slowly drill the pilot hole from the back going outward. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll tape the fender on this side and then we'll use the pilot hole to go this way. It's easier to get the paint, keep the paint from chipping coming from this direction in than it is in coming out because it'll actually flake the paint off. So I'll go ahead and drill the pilot hole on the back side right now and uh, we'll come back around to the front. Okay, so the pilot hole is drilled. One of the things you have to do is kind of estimate like how how far your sharpie it was off so that actually landed about just about perfect for me so what i'm going to do now is head to the outside and tape this up see the pilot hole is nice and clean on the outside now we know where we uh, start grilling so uh, we can feel good about that when we start i'll get it taped up and start grilling through the nice beautiful paint you can just stick a drill bit back through that so now you can see your pilot hole uh you can push it from the back side whatever the tape actually acts as a, a protectant for the paint. If you put this blue tape on here when you're drilling, it'll keep you from scratching it if you are messing around with tools. But it also keeps the paint from tearing when the, when the hole saw actually catches. Now we'll run the hole saw at a super slow speed. If you run it fast, it's just a lot bigger room for error and you're not in that big a hurry. But it also gives us something that we can trace around when we're going to make our final adjustments. So you can mark it with a pen or a Sharpie or whatever. So it's really important to have that blue tip. So I actually go super slow, like I said, and your first, you know, most people with a drill, especially if you don't work on a lot of stuff, is to just push through, but you kind of want to pull back that way. You can kind of have control of things. So just a light pressure, but keep your hand this way. So it, when it does catch, it doesn't A, gouge around, and B, it doesn't like suck through and uh, it'll cause some damage. Just run it really slow. It's going to tear through this plastic like nobody's business. So. Like I said before, these big pole saws want to really catch and they'll buck and I've had them jump out of my hands and go across the bumper before on my own stuff. And there you have it, you've ruined a perfectly good fender. And so you'll see what I'm talking about here. The reason why we do this and sneak up on it is because 
We want to make sure that fits there through there perfectly. It looks like it's nice and squared up, but it gives us a little bit of leverage. Like if you missed it one way or another, you can basically just carve out around that side or that way. So you want to get a nice representative uh, hole through there and you should be able to shove the pipe right through at this point and see if it, if it fits and then obviously make adjustments from there. The other thing I'll note is you'll see this bumper is actually contoured on here. And the reason why we make these things so thin is A, we want to keep them low profile. Like I said, I don't want them to be all gaudy, but also you can kind of contort this and that's why there's all these different rivet holes. So you can actually kind of like push it in to those creases, which we'll do here in a little bit and then work your way around and rivet it. So it basically looks like it was molded to the bumper. Now that this is drilled, you can get a kind of a better view of where things are gonna come out at. Looks like we pretty much nailed it. So at this point, like I said, we can kind of work on getting this all traced out. So just a Sharpie and that, and then I'll trim out around. My two tools of choice are these two. Uh, this is a just like a small sawzall, handheld, air-powered, reciprocating saw. This is a good one for trimming up, but you don't want to use this the whole time because it'll actually put a lot of heat into it and melt the paint, but it's good for trimming small edges. It's a barrel sander. You just turn this thing counterclockwise to tighten this little piece of sandpaper on there that's basically in a circle and uh, you can kind of just massage everything out at the end. Oh, and do that now, that way we can stick the pipe back through that hole and uh, hopefully finish up these downpipes. So I made the cut and then used a the barrel sander to kind of work things out. And as you can see, I missed the hole by a little bit on top. Well, so it appears, but this is the reason why I cut it whole small and then work up on it because as you can see, because I was a little bit cautious in the beginning, I'm gonna have plenty of room by the time I, uh, work the rest of this out, see how much blue there is at the bottom, and then that's right at the top, so I can kind of uh, use that top as my locating point and then work out to the bottom and still keep my gap all the way around that. That's the reason why you do it slowly and take your time because unless you're a painting body guy, it's way easier to take an extra hour to do that or half hour, 20 minutes, whatever you want to call it, than it is to try and paint that and have the color match. Paint's not free, your time's not free in that either, so uh, do it right the first time. And then as you can see, we hung this pipe out a little bit long, um, so then we can adjust it and make it look how we want with the finished product. So we went ahead and fully welded up the down pipe. Now that's another important step, just like tightening the clamp because things will warp, uh, even if you tack them perfectly, they're gonna warp a certain amount. Um, we actually did the other side already. So we went ahead and got the trim ring all done on this side. Uh, everything turned out great. You can see the pipe is hanging out a little bit far, which we did on purpose so that we could um, adjust how it's cut and the angularity and all that stuff. Before I start trimming, what I'm gonna do is basically contour this trim ring. Like I said, these are made out of uh, aluminum, so they're very easy to contour to the actual car. You can see I just pushed it in right there. So what I'm gonna do is drill some holes. I got a eighth inch drill bit. And then I've got some Clecos. Uh, it's always a good idea so you're not trying to hit a moving target to go ahead and get it where you want it on here, Cleco it in place, and then trace and uh, trim until you get it exactly how you want it. Then we're gonna pull the tape off, um, put the trim ring back on, rivet it. We already have the, roll, the, the holes from the Clecos, so we won't have to worry about messing any paint up at that point. And then we will come back, trim the downpipes, and we'll be done. So basically these, we want this to kind of match the other side. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and it's as simple as just kind of get it in place. And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just um, drill this top hole here and then we'll contour from there. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So we're gonna go ahead and load up one of these Clecos. So all these are is they're just a spring-loaded. If you've never used one before, they're a really handy tool because they're like a non-permanent, kind of a temporary rivet, but they hold themselves in place, which if you're trying to contour something like this, it's a must-have. So we'll just work our way around and we'll work that contour in as we go. Um, but, so these are really not thick and that's on purpose. So you can pretty much almost just contour them with your finger other than a little bit of spring back. 
So we'll just kind of start working our way around and uh, get to the end. So we got Clecos all the way around this thing. And it uh, looks like the gap is gonna lay out perfectly. So we'll go ahead and get this downpipe off of here. So now that the downpipe is out, we can, uh, anything that's blue on the inside needs to be taken out. So I'll just go ahead and trace around it with a Sharpie. And then we'll know that we can go to the outside of that line and have plenty of room. So you don't have to be perfect with it all. Um, and then if you do that, you can uh, trim it up, pull the tape off, and uh, we'll move on. It's a good time to use the sander, so we'll just, this thing really chews through the uh, fiberglass, so what we'll do is just kind of sneak up on it. So you can see the tape did its job as you're peeling this off. None of the paint comes with it. So now we just have a nice clean cut edge. Put this uh, trim ring back up on here. Figure out which way it goes. And we'll just start ribboning it on. And go like that. So you can see all the rivets fall right back into place. I always go ahead and put all of them in before I start riveting anything. Um, at this point you can just kind of hand file any areas if you want to, but Looks like we're sitting pretty good on this thing, so we'll rivet these on and we'll be done. All right, guys, looks pretty darn good. You can see it's even contoured to the bumper and everything. Of course, like I said before, we're gonna cut that. I might even talk Andy into doing a little small set of bull horns. So the point of this video wasn't to show people who already know how to do these, um, but the point is to show you guys that if you use this style technique, you don't have to cut it perfect the first time. There's chassis guys who can just come in with a hole saw, boop, see ya, and it's perfect. But then you see people put a huge hole and the trim ring doesn't fit and uh, fit and finish isn't great. And uh, just tips like this will help you create and make a better fit and finish on your car, which to me, the details are everything. Anybody can build a turbo car. Anybody can uh, you know, build down pipes and stuff like that. I just like to see the details uh as crisp as possible and i hope this helps some people um work on their project so thanks for tuning in do not forget to hit that subscribe leave us a comment in the comment section below we'd love to hear your thoughts if you have any ideas maybe other people can see your tips or hear your tips uh there or we'll see uh future ideas for other tech tip tuesdays we'll see you guys later thanks for tuning in